What is up guys, you're your announcer, your boy Kagi, back at it again with a new video and in this video I bring you a brand new game right out of the oven, nobody really knows about this game, but this game seems like it's gonna be massive. Um, I'm very excited about this game, I've been reading the white paper on the low, I've been highlighting the white paper and seeing where this game is going and I wanted to bring it to you guys, bring it to your attention, so make sure you like, make sure you comment without any scams and make sure you subscribe to this channel. So the game I bring you today is Star Atlas. Star Atlas Atlas is a grand strategy game of space exploration, territorial conquest, political domination, and more. And you might be thinking, yes, another MMO in space. No, this is different. This is absolutely different. When I'm reading the white paper, I'm seeing these people know what they want. They have the vision step by step. And when you read a white paper like that, you have to get excited. And on top of that, the people backing this game up. Alright guys, so the first thing you have to know is that this game is going to be built on Solana, on the Solana network. This blockchain is huge, but not a lot of people talk about it. It's like flying under the radar, but in reality, this blockchain is massive. And if we actually see this video by Ivan on Tech, he actually talked about it. Solana is one of these projects that is a bit under the radar for most people. It's a big coin, guys. It's a big coin. It's done by FTX, guys. It's a big coin. And yeah, the more projects they have building, the better. So yeah, as you guys can see, Solana is a big, big coin. It's flying under the radar. But if we actually go to their ecosystem right here, we can see all the partners they have. But in reality, Solana is a huge, huge project. And it's done by the FTX, guys, which is a trading platform, just like Binance. It's a big platform, actually. And it's done by this guy. SBF Alameda, this guy right here, this guy right here is a genius and he has built FTX and he's also built Serum. Serum is also a decentralized exchange, so it's very, 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 very promising this game because the backers of this game are Solana, Serum and FTX. And one of the things that you have to do in blockchain is that you have to follow the narrative. Ivan on Tech says that all the time, you have to follow the narrative. If a game or a project has a good backing, right, from massive projects, from massive personalities, right, you have to go into them, even, even if you don't like them that much, even if you don't like the project that much, just out of pumpamentals, you should be getting into these projects right this is not financial advice this is what i'm going to do and i'm bringing it to you guys so you guys understand what this game is all about now we know that mmos are hard to achieve that's something that is known in the gaming industry from the traditional industry if you're new to gaming it's one of those things mmos are hard to achieve especially space explorations mmos and especially space games even if they're not mmos they're so hard because it's so massive the vision of making a space exploration game is so massive and and one good game that actually failed at the beginning when it came out it didn't live up to the standard and today there's it's still being played it's still being played because now years later is when this game actually made it actually made it in the beginning people were disappointed because the game is just too massive and this is one of those games that is massive it's gonna be a massive game and it has a big big vision so I'm gonna give you an example of a game called no man's sky it's not on blockchain and this game can make it because it has good backings okay so so no man's sky not an mmo but it's in a space exploration game and it's massive there's so many things to do i actually have this game but i don't play it anymore if it's not blockchain i'm not playing you know how it is Alright guys, so there you have it, there you have it. This is the type of game we're going for. Space exploration, you can do mining, you can own a planet, you can own a space station, all those good stuff, all those good stuff. But in this game, obviously, nobody really owns anything here. So that's the difference. We're trying to do a real life economy where you own a planet or where you own a space station and whatever transactions go through the space station, whether it's fuel, whether it's, you know, crafting, whether it's you going to somebody else's planet or you own the planet, somebody comes to your planet and then they have to pay a fee to get in or whatever. Or maybe the fee is actually mining resources. So if you mine resources in my planet, then I get a, a percentage of those resources that you... Um, 
um, mind in my planet. So things like that. So that's the vision that you guys have to put into this game. All right, guys. So this white paper is very, very deep. All right, so first things first, introduction to the game. Star Allies is a virtual gaming metaverse based in the year 2620. In the distant future, three major factions have emerged. The Mud Territory governed by humankind, the Oni region as a consortium of alien races. Number three, the Uster Sector controlled by sentient androids. You, a faction citizen of Star Atlas, will have the ability to influence the outcome of this intergalactic conflict while creating the opportunity to earn rewards for your contributions. Very, very important. This has a story already. It has a story. You got humankind, you got aliens, and you got robots. So it's like, it's a fight between all of these. Very, very nice, very nice. That, ha that has me pumped already. So let's take a look at the blockchain mechanics. Blockchain-based in-game currency, Atlas, and Polish built on Solana like we talked DeFi directly integrated into the game interface via Serum on-chain governance model providing players with the ultimate level of political control and of course many other things but you know I highlighted those and then core game mechanics of course there's a bunch of things that like I told you like the the video that I showed you you know grand strategy space exploration land and territory control vehicle and fleet control all of those good stuff right but one of the things that I saw here is VR enabled I never seen never seen you know an MMO space MMO that has VR enabled that would be really really cool if they can actually pull this off in a way that I feels natural right that it's not like a force vr you know enabled game right now one of the most important things that stood out for me was unreal engine 5 the new technology nanite 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 graphics technology has been in the works for over a decade and is set to release in 2021 and here we have a video of epic games talking about nanite there's another area that we thought we could push forward truly virtualized geometry the artist wouldn't have to be concerned over poly counts draw calls or memory could directly use film quality assets and bring them straight into the engine. And that's a big deal for artists. I just want to be able to import my ZBrush model, my photogrammetry scan, my CAD data, without wasting any time optimizing, creating LODs, or even lowering the quality to make it hit frame rate. In the end, that's what it's all about. Art that just works. And we call this new technology Nanite. Here is the future of Unreal Engine running live on a PlayStation 5. Awesome. Let's take a look at it. This has to be the right way. Before we continue, let's stop a moment and take a look at some of the key features of this demo. Much of what you see was built with Quixel Megascan assets, but instead of using the game versions, we use the cinematic versions, which would typically only be used in film. There are around a million triangles each. And thanks to virtual texturing, they all use 8K textures as well. Nanite can render an insane number of triangles very quickly. There are over a billion triangles of source geometry in each frame that Nanite crunches down losslessly to around 20 million drawn triangles. What does that many triangles look like? This isn't noise. These are the triangles, each a different color. Most are so small that they look like noise. Nanite achieves detail down to the pixel, which means triangles are often the size of pixels. This All right, so let's jump deeper into the game. Uh, it says right here, people set up mining or staking nodes and plug them into the blockchain network to enhance the network while also earning value from it. The hybrid experience of Star Atlas closely mimics the nature of how blockchain technology functions. All right, so let's go into exploration. Star Atlas enables players to captain deep space crewed spaceships to scan and discover celestial and terrestrial assets. Once discovered, rich claims that our state can be mined, refined and traded through the network of commercial mining installation, refineries and universal marketplace. Players can also captain a pilot the ship manually through first person cockpit bridge view. Cockpit view is also suitable for seated virtual reality gaming. Amazing. That sounds amazing. From trading raw and refined ore to cargo hauling to crafting retail components, there is a broad range of career choices a player can embody and advance within the specializations of that career. So basically, you can choose whatever you want. You can be whoever you want in this game. And that's amazing. When you have like different options of doing different things in the game, it creates basically a, a real-time a real economy, like a real-life economy in a game. This immersive first-person 
person seated view will allow players to utilize equipment such as flight sticks, throttles, multifunctional button control panels, head tracking hardware, and most importantly, virtual reality head mounted displays. Fun racing. Fun racing, the most important part, of course. And this is why I'm bringing this game to you guys. So you guys can get into this game when this game actually comes out. When the assets come out, when the pre-sale comes out, everything. So you're ready for this uh, when it comes out. You know, so you know about it. So fundraising in the form of asset sales will take place in several phases based on development milestones. So phase one, OpenSea is an established Ethereum marketplace for crypto collectible game assets sold via OpenSea will not be playable until phase two, though certain elements of mining, staking, and yield farming will be immediately available. Now phase two, browser minigame. A minimal and viable product version of Star Atlas will be launched as a browser-based minigame. Players and collectors can play and purchase in-game assets. In-game assets can be utilized immediately in the minigame. Assets purchased will be Solana based in the minigame phase and will be configurable within the context of the Star Atlas feature set. So that's very, very important. Basically, they're right, right off the bat, when, once they sell this, now you can use it in phase two in a minigame so they can keep the community active. That's one of the, the most important things. You don't want to just make a sale and then that's it. You made a sale, now you wait 20 years to, to actually use your assets. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of blockchain games actually lose track. You know, they lose power. They lose, you know, the, the, the pumpamentals because they do this, you know, they, they do the sale and then two or three years later, now they have the game. And then people have forgetting about it or people jump into other games that are more active. And I like this. I like this. I like that they are thinking about this. So you buy the assets and right away, boom, phase two. And there you go. You're at least playing a mini game and at least you can make money by trading and by farming and by all those things right all right so let's jump into phase three shipyard module cell after the successful launch of phase two full production commences on star atlas in unreal engine 5 the first milestone of this game version will be functional shipyard module this mode allows players and collectors to view their final in-game assets but is limited to the shipyard of their chosen faction's central space station this assets will include crew components and ships phase four once the version of star atlas is deployed all remaining pre-live assets go on sale. All assets purchased in the phase are immediately and fully playable in a beta build for a Star Atlas. Phase 5. Ongoing sales. Ongoing sales of newly introduced assets will be limited to new concepts and post-live production ready assets developed by Star Atlas development team. All production ready assets are no longer purchasable upon full launch of the live version of Star Atlas. This does not include the remaining phase three beta sale assets. Star Atlas parent company receives transaction tax from all in-game trades. Salvage Wars. Salvage Wars is an in-lore game that players can participate in. It allows players to bid on containers full of salvage assets. The contents of these containers are known before purchase. The weight of the containers and likelihood of quality content is known before purchase. This is really good for content creators. So let's say I, I put like five ETH into containers, right? And I can open them live. That's one of those things that, you know, they're thinking about content here. At, at least I think they're thinking about content. I, I love that type of content, right? So you go live or you make a little video, you put five ETH, one ETH, whatever you have, and then you make a little video on it and then boom. And if they make it like interactive where it has like sounds and it feels like, damn, holy crap, I opened the container and I got all this stuff, right? Th that's the content right there. That's the content. And I think a lot of games don't, you know, see that and they lack that perspective, the content perspective. Now, very important, asset use case. Interested customers of pre-launched assets have several avenues to exercise the value of their purchases. In-game professional careers, pre-purchased assets provide convenience for mining, rescue, pirating, freight, bounty hunting, imperialism, crafting, retail, ship storage fees, refining fees, repair, refueling, defense, offense, and jump point travel fees. So there's a lot of things you can do here. There's a lot of, you know, career path that you can take, different assets that generate uh, passive income. Of course, we need a lot of players for that, but that's the whole point. That's the whole point. If the game delivers, it will have players. If the game delivers, it will have players. If it delivers in a way that it feels, you know, like a, like a game that you want to play every single day, then you will have players and it will be good to invest in those assets. I'm going to invest in those assets, not financial advice, but I will try to get one of those assets that generate me passive income. Asset brokerage, asset speculator, purchasing early assets to sell later, as opposed to actual using game. Of course, we have a lot of that in crypto, right? 
node staking, idle staking in safe zones for passive portfolio growth. Okay, interesting. Alternate gaming clients. Open source blockchain allows other connected clients to utilize the mechanics of Star Atlas assets in an alternative means of exchange that we do not actively review. All right, gameplay pillars. Faction security zones. New players choose a faction and start in a faction secure safe zone. Once a player is sufficiently confident enough to venture out, there is a medium tiered safety zone that is secured by mercenary groups. The final distance zone of Star Atlas is a wild frontier where full combat and destruction of assets is permanent event. The result of the destroyed ship in combat is that the ship assets is decimated into components, scrap, escape pod crew members, and a certain amount is lost forever. So high risk, high reward uh, zone, basically. Deep space exploration. All visible stars are real assets and can be visited. Although some distant stars can be prohibitively distant and will require proper fueling to reach. Yeah, you guys get it. Players will pilot their ships manually to uncover all the riches the universe has to hide using their upgradable scanning modules. Scanning data can be acted upon and staked or can be placed on the marketplace to be sold. Interesting. Combat. Ships are outfitted with weapon turrets and missile base. Turrets can be energy, ballistic, or disruption type to target different components of enemy ships and installations. However, those installations can also have their own weaponry installed ready for attacks. All players can mark their stance as aggressive or passive. Something like maybe like GTA where you can just, you know, click and uh, passive or or being aggressive mode to signal their desired combat engagements. Passive stance affords a shield and maneuverability buff to allow for escape if attacked without formal declarations. Interesting. So you have an advantage if you're in passive mode. So basically you can't shoot back, but you can, you know, you know, um, get the hell out of there basically faster. Crew and ship component outfitting. All ships contain components and crew members that enhance the features and stats of each ship. Ships have native aptitudes for different gameplay features. This means that ships can be fitted with specific tier components that enhance the ship's functionality within those professional roles. Matching crew incorrectly can cause debuffs to the ship's performance. Very, very important. So basically, you got to have a team that works together, right? Uh, you don't want to have a team with the same professions, right? You want to have a team that has different professions so that your your actual ship can work, you know, can work well because uh, it makes a lot of sense. It's like real life. It's like a real life job, right? Basically, if you go into an office and everybody's doing the same thing, you're not really getting anything done, right? So that leads me to professions. Professional roles manifest in their chosen chips roles. Players can earn in-game by having the correct chips, crew, and components for their desired roles. Example of roles, transport, rescue, freight, repair, construction, refueling, miner, salvage, entrepreneur, CEO, broker, bounty hunter, pirate, smuggler, data runner, commander, general, mercenary, and scientist. So my, my guess is that um, that's a lot of roles. That's a lot of roles. So there's going to be a, a bunch of meta. This is going to be a bunch of meta. Uh, people are just going to like meta game, right? And try to find out which which roles together work, work the best, right? So that's pretty interesting, actually. Crew members within a ship also have individual station roles such as pilot, engineer, repair, scanner, science, gunner, mercenary, rescue, power manager, janitor, cargo foreman, hangar foreman, salvage operator, science officer, military commander, military general, private, sergeant, rookie, smuggler, cargo foreman, and captain. That's a lot of roles, you know. Um, uh, it, it makes me excited about this game, but at the same time, it's very robust. There's a lot of things to it. And for something like this to work, we need a lot of players. We need a lot of players. There's a lot of roles, and I don't know, you know, just something to keep in mind, something to keep in mind. Decentralized Autonomous Corporation, the guild system of Star Atlas. Through the implementation of decentralized autonomous corporations, entire space cities can be constructed and the microeconomy managed by those in charge. Careful strategic corporations enables players to dominate regions and the resources available therein. The Polis token will serve a pivotal role in these cities, permitting the owners of political cloud to impose taxes, fees, 
finds rules and laws on those outside of the DAC wishing to gain access to these entirely independent owned cities. Wow, that sounds amazing. Economics. Star Atlas fully embraces the potential of decentralized self-sovereign ownership of assets permitted through the implementation of blockchain into asset ownership and NFT marketplaces. Of course, we in crypto, we in blockchain, we know we know we're here for this. This is what we're here for. We want to own our assets. We want to govern our own things. So this is amazing. This goes in line with blockchain. Of course, it's a blockchain game. The ethos of Star Atlas development team is to encourage the monetization of time spent in virtual world and emphasize the ability for this monetization to transcend the metaverse to the real world. We believe this is the model for the future of gaming. Of course, me too. I believe the same thing. I, I like you guys. I like you guys. I believe the same thing, Star Atlas. Star Atlas is driven by a dual token system, Atlas and Polis. As we heard before, Polis is the governance token with multi-currency Solana asset support. Let's take a look at Atlas, in-game currency. Atlas will serve as a native in-game currency within the Star Atlas. It is the lubricant of the metaverse. Players will initially leverage Atlas to acquire digital assets such as ships, crew, components, land, and equipment. However, as in any real economy, a financial system is necessary to facilitate commerce. Whether it be through NPC merchants or direct peer-to-peer -peer transactions, Atlas is the unit of account to execute operational requirements. Here we can see the Polis governance token. Polis is a multifunctional governance token with applications both in-game and in direct real-world economic policy. In game within the Star Atlas Metaverse, political influence is yet another strategic consideration in the management of territory and navigation of space. Holders of policy will be in a unique position of jurisdictional ownership over entire regions, regardless of who owns title NFT to the land and equipment rights. So it's very, very important to have the police token for sure. Real world externally control of police will enable the gaming community to influence decisions making of the Star Atlas development team. This will follow a period of centralization of decisions making likely two three years of game development and balance at the conclusion of the centralized period holders will be able to influence game economics assets release schedules game direction and will otherwise provide some degree of ownership in development decision making so yeah basically you can shift where the actual game is going and of course they're giving themselves time so they can actually build the game and build the infrastructure so that then after that is done, right, then we can start, you know, shifting the game um, from, from a base, right, from a base point. Because if we start shifting the game from now, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Then the vision doesn't come to fruition, right? So it's very important to for them to have time to build the infrastructure and then we can jump in. And if you have Polish uh, token and you can, you know, make decisions into the game. Now, there's many, many things um, into the economics. I'm not going to go into it. I'm just going to leave it for you guys to read it. But I actually read all of that. This is actually interesting right here. DeFi financial system. You could um, lending, loaning a variety of Solana Serum assets to earn yield. Automated market making on various asset pairs to earn trade fees. Yield farming, identifying assets to borrow at lower yield. And lending trading with higher yield, earning the spread on assets. Very interesting, very interesting. And post-life growth, which is very important. Long-term vision of the game. That's one of the main things I, I look for in a game. If it doesn't have long-term vision, then it kind of just dies, right? They, they make the game, they do whatever, and that's it, it dies. But I think long-term vision is very important to have it even before... You know, long-term vision, of course, can change over time. Um, it, it's just how it is, you know. Long-term vision is something that you, you kind of shift with with how you build right the way you build how things go and but it is very important to at least have like a goal right anyways guys i'm gonna leave the links down below for a few games that have made it actually outside of blockchain not uh, a lot of games have made it in in blockchain you know blockchain is something new you know asset ownership that's a new concept you know like y you can't tell somebody from the traditional gaming hey here you can own your asset whatever one of those gamers on twitch it's very hard to convince they don't really understand it but once they understand it um, I think this is one of those games that people might want to jump in. So I'll see you guys next video. I hope you guys enjoyed and see you. Peace.